Hi guys, this is Aslam Khan here. Today I'm going to teach you cash book and petty cash book. Many of the students were suggesting to do this video and today I'm going to do this. Chapter 8, petty cash book and cash book. I'm going to explain in this video entirely regarding cash book. I'm not going to touch petty cash book. On video recording too of chapter 8, I'll be recording petty cash book. Please do not forget to subscribe my channel to learn with me more in future. Let's start the chapter. Now you might see here uh, the uh, in a cash book, you know, until now you'd have learned my uh, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, entire videos until chapter 7. So you will have a good base knowledge. Before you come into this, uh, you need to review chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6 completely because you, we are going to do a lot of double entries in this, uh, in this uh, chapter. So if you do not know, uh, if you do not know those particular areas, you will be not doing this chapter in a good manner. So let's start cash book. So what is a cash book? Actually, cash book is where you record all the cash what we receive and you record all the cash cash which goes from the business outside the business. So when you receive a, a cash and when you when you pay a cash amount, how do you record? That's what we are going to see today. So uh, when it comes to this, I am going to read only important stuff. I'm not saying this textbook doesn't have important stuff, but I'm going to focus on the areas which is very essential. Uh, in my class, you will be learning that the entire uh, thing. You don't want to learn the entire textbook to take an A, a pass in your exam. Just know the terms, very important terms, and of course that's enough, and know how to do the sum particularly. So moving on to the point we want to discuss, cash book is the primary book in which the receipts and payment of cash currency are recorded. A business has various sources of cash as well as different ways of payment. So now they have sources of cash. What are the ways a, a, a business will have received some cash? So source of cash means the way the business receives cash. So number one, it says that the owner's capital, number two, cash sales, Number three, cash received from debtors. Debtors means credit customers, borrowing money, cash received for rent income, investment income, income on permission. So a business will not earn an income only by the trading purposes. The business might uh, earn income other than the trading activity. That's what we say. Uh, other than like other, that's what we say when it comes to rent income, invest income, and income on commission. So business earns in a uh, in in a manner not only in trading. Activities. Trading means day to day business activities. Let's move on to cash payments. What are the basic cash payments? Whatever the cash adjustments, you should record it under cash book. So, normally we might pay loans, but we have taken in cash, purchase of goods for cash, cash payments to creditors. If you have purchased goods on credit, you should pay it in cash. Payments made for expenses such as salaries for employees, electricity, etc. Payments made for purchasing fixed assets such as furniture, equipment. Withdrawal of cash by the owners of for his further use. So, if the owner takes the money out of the business, it's a part of drawings. You need to know these basic double entries cards. So that's why I'm saying check chapter four, chapter five, chapter six before coming into this content. Then we move on to the point we want to discuss. So what's receipt? Again, there's a lot of things you might uh, go through in the receipt. So I'm not going to go through the whole content. I'm going to go through which is important for me and for you. So the, when a business receives cash, the business would issue a document called receipt to the party who gave money to the business as evidence for such a receipt. Now you guys need to know one thing that if you guys are having a receipt, why do you uh, issue a receipt? If you receive cash, uh, you know, you issue a document. That document is known as receipt. Just remember that. If you receive money, you give some sort of uh, document. That source document is known as the cash receipt. So then we move on to the next adjustment. I'm not going to read the entire stuff guys because I, I feel it's not necessary for you guys to focus. So just have a look on a receipt. Again, this is not tested in your exam. How a receipt will look like. How a receipt will be tested? No, guys, it will not be tested at all. So I'm 100% guarantee of this particular. It will not be tested. So you don't want to learn this particular area. So now, have a, you know, when it comes to when you receive some money, you will uh, give this uh, receipt to the person who is making the payments. So then we have uh, like you see, these are the ways you can uh, issue a receipt. Cash memo is also a part of the receipt. Then we move on to the next part. Again, I'm not I'm not considering uh, actually one as an important part. Let's move on to the second uh, document, which is the payment voucher. The payment voucher is a document prepared by business with the relevant details as an evidence that cash payments are made, which also should be authorized by a responsible officer. So when payment goes from your business premises, you should record those payments on particularly, uh, you should record those cash payments, particularly uh, on a certain book source document. That book or source document is known as payment voucher. So I hope you guys understand what is payment voucher. With that knowledge, we move on to the next part. So here you might see uh, certain things uh, like the, the way they uh, issue a payment voucher, how much they have made payment. So here they have the details and the amount paid. And uh, it's not that important to know the structure because it's not much tested in your exam. Then we move on to page number 87. What is the function of a cash book? Cash book has two type of functions. Number one, they, they are saying that performs the function as a primary book. 
Number two, they say it has performed the function of a ledger account. So you record it in the primary book, which is the cash book. Then you record that uh, cash book details under ledger account. So that's what we're going to see. How do you record it under primary books and how do we record it under ledger account? Then we move on to the recording of cash transaction. So when you uh, receive cash, uh, received, you consider it as cash book debit. Uh, so why we consider it as cash book debit? Because when asset increases, it is a debit. Then also when it comes to payment of cash, cash book credit, if your asset is decreasing, it's a part of credit. I have taught you this entirely completely on accounting equation, chapter number five and chapter number six. Again, have a look onto that. So again, I don't feel these are important. You need to, by at the end of the month, you should transfer the values from your cash book to the ledger account. That I will teach you, uh, teach you how to do that. Now let's start this sum, Lakshini's business. As I said, don't uh, make too much over complicated of studying this basic stuff. This is a very easy area. Following transaction in cash took place during the month of January in Lakshini's business, which was commenced on 1st of January, 2000. Uh, and they have given certain data. So before we uh, start this sum, you need to know this format. What are the basic way you need to prepare? Now, this is the cash books format. You might see it should have a date. It should have a receipt. It should have a description. Uh, ledger folio, not much tested. Again, it's not important to draw a ledger folio in exams, but still if you uh, present. Uh, ledger folio, you don't use most probably in exams because it's just represented thing. Uh, if you have any uh, like contra entries, you will use ledger folio, but not in this account. This is a normal uh, cash book. We say it has two column cash book, uh, but uh, they have excluded the term two column or three column cash book. But I'm going to teach you the basic cash book now. Then I will be moving on to three column cash book. By that time, if we find ledger folio important, we'll be using ledger folio into the sum. So now we want to draw the format in our Excel uh, sheet. So you guys need to take a sheet with you guys now. You want to do the same thing with me now. You can, I hope you guys can see my. Excel sheet very clearly. So I'm going to zoom a bit and I'm going to put the format guys to make a bit uh, comfortable for you guys to copy it down. Let me move on to the chart. Now I'm going to start with the same format I'm going to follow. You guys have the format. What is the format? Date, receipt number, description, ledger folio. So I'm going to draw the format then I'll be starting this sum. So first I'll draw it. So I'm going to record, stop this uh, recording for a while. Then after I put the format, I'll be starting this recording. Yeah, hi guys. I'm done with the uh, recording the basic stuff. So I mean the format in my Excel sheet. Now we're going to start the sum together. Uh, take your writing book, start writing the uh, topic uh, cash book. This is two column cash book I'm going to teach you. The basic stuff in your O levels, uh, in your uh, grade 10 syllabus. Then after that, we will be going to the complex cash book. Now, if you see here on 1st, first, first 2000, they have not given a year. So I'm going to take 1st, first, first, they have invested 80,000. As you all know, the double they already have watched sixth video and fifth video on this particular chapters four, five, six, you might be knowing how to do the capital investment. So how do we take capital investment? Capital account will become credit, uh, cash account will become debit because when you invest capital, capital account will become credit. Then I'm gonna take my uh, capital account. So I have put some uh, formats guys for me to record. You will only record the cash transaction on the cash account. So the double entry I'm gonna record. So first of all, I'm gonna record cash account because it's a debit account. Uh, debit uh, uh, amount which is going to be I always write the narration capital because you are going to put the capital adjustment here on first uh, first you are first january you are recording your it has capital you are investing capital into the business how much you are investing you are investing eighty thousand so I recorded eighty thousand and you might see capital you might see the date here so particularly if you have debit now this side as i said in cash book uh, this side is representing the debit side and i mean the left side is representing the debit side and the right side is representing the credit side. So if you have debit in cash book, uh, I have to write here cash book guys. So if you have debit in your cash book, then of course the, the opposite double entry should be, capital account should be credit, but you should write the date first, first uh, cash book or cash, you can write cash 80,000. So you have recorded the basic double entry on the first adjustment. And we're gonna move on to the second adjustment guys. If you don't find, if you find it difficult guys, then of course you have problems in double entry. You need to review those videos which I have uploaded earlier. Bought goods for resale for 45,000. If you purchase goods, of course your cash is going out of the business. If cash is going out of the business, you will record it on, in the credit side of the cash book. You will record here. Uh, now I need to know the date guys when I'm doing the sum. So what is the date of this sum? It is on second uh, first. So uh, this resale purposes is where you are making a payment. So I'm going to record it on the 
as you all know i just came to see the date on second first so knowing the date is important if they are given a date in exam use the date column guys if it, if they are not used it don't use uh, they might give most of the time in exam so use the dates you might score some marks in exam so it's not february guys it's uh, actually you know second january so the description is purchase of goods you can write purchases so purchase is amount 45000 So record it on the credit side. Then we move on to the adjustment number third one. I'm gonna see the date again. Ah, uh, you gonna you can see where I'm uh, keeping my spotlight, so you can have an eye on what I'm doing. Third adjustment, fourth first, uh, obtain the bank loan of fifty thousand. So if you obtain bank loan, actually, ah, uh, now I didn't finish the double entry of purchase actually because I have done here credit. So credit means this account, which is a purchases account, should become debit, guys. I'll take I'll open up a ledger account for purchases. So I'm gonna write purchases and now. Purchase was in cash book. It was on the credit side. So here it should come on the on the second first in cash. It should come under the debit side forty five thousand. So I have recorded that all the guys can have a have a look on what I have done. The double entry. Double entry is very important when you are doing the adjustment. So then we move on to the adjustment number third one. Ah, uh, we are starting adjustment number third fourth first. Obtain the bank loan fifty thousand. So now when you obtain a bank loan, guys, it's a money receipt coming in. So your cash book will increase. So if cash book increase, it should be recorded on the debit side. You write here bank loan you are receiving, and you will record it as fifty thousand. And you need to know the date. Uh, date was fourth first. So I'm gonna write, you know, as it is Excel. I'm always writing on the opposite way. So fourth first uh, January, I got a bank loan of fifty thousand. So if cash book is debit, then of course bank loan is a liability. It should be on the credit side. So I will record it on the bank loan account. I will record it as credit side. Uh, how much fifty thousand? Saying the date, always to present the date properly. Then say cash because it's cash book. Then I have recorded the basement of these three adjustments. So we move on to the fourth adjustment, guys. Adjustment number four says that bought furniture for rupees eight thousand. If you buy furniture for rupees eight thousand, where will you record? You need to know that the furniture account is a non-current asset account, so you record it under furniture account debit. Then of course uh, cash is going out because you are buying from cash. Then of course. You will take cash account credit. So now I'm gonna take cash account. You guys, I need to know the date again. I, I forgot to see the date. I'm so uh, bad because I'm not watching the dates properly. So eight first. Okay. So be always uh, focused on what you're doing. Eight first, you uh, purchase the you purchase the furniture. Okay. So how much is the furniture? Uh, yeah. Furniture eight. Uh, eight first, you receive you made a furniture. The furniture's value is eight uh, thousand. Now you need to see that I have not uh, recorded the uh, adjustment receipt number one, two, voucher number one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, uh, normally I record it later. Or if you guys feel that you want to record it at the beginning, you can do it ah uh, at the beginning. Like when you record one by one, you can record. But I record it later to cross check have I done the work ah uh, properly. So once I record it, I will come and record the voucher and in ah uh, payment ah uh, payment stuffs. I mean voucher and. This is proper. Now, furniture is an amount which is going out of the business, as you all know. How much I'm investing in furniture? Eight thousand. So I'm going to record eight thousand under credit side. I'm going to open up a furniture a furniture account on the ledger account. Always you need to, you. I hope you guys are doing with me. Furniture account. So I'm going to record. Ah, uh, furniture is a non-current asset account. It's still an asset account. So eight thousand is the debit. You will write here. Ah, uh, eight first. Ah, uh, cash. Date is eight and it's eight thousand. Then we move on to the next adjustment, adjustment number five. So when I move on to adjustment number five, ah, uh, we have rent paid rupees six thousand. So if you pay rent, your cash is going out, and rent is an expense. So rent is a rent account will become a ah uh, debit account. So let me write the uh, adjustment, Mr. Paul. Rent paid. I'm sorry. Yeah. Rent. How much is the amount they have paid? Rent and the date. I need to see the date. So fifteenth six thousand. Six thousand. So I'm going to take in. Sorry, thousand. I'm going to open up another account, guys. I'm going to open up rent account. Go so one by one, guys. I have. I'm going to copy the same ledger account because it's it's Excel for me. I can just copy and paste it, and I can delete the information, which is repetitively marked. So don't do this. You can't do it in your writing book. Uh, but you need to just draw it and do it. Rent account it will become cash here. Actually, the date I should put just about fifteen first cash. Actually, they are spending ah uh, rent. I think five thousand. Sorry, six thousand. 
So double entry is done, guys. Always try to record the double entry carefully. Always ensure that the double entry is uh, done properly. Then we move on to the next adjustment, guys. I'm going to move on to sixth adjustment of this sum. On 18th, first, third, goods sold for cash, 40,000. If you sell for cash, your cash will increase. So cash will become debit. Sales will become debit. Uh, I mean, sales account will become credit and cash account will become debit because you, you need to record in that particular name. So I'm going to write here, first of all, uh, yeah, I'm going to write here, first of all, sales. Uh, how much is my sales? I think my sales is uh, actually 40,000. And the date is 18. Okay, so I'm going to write 18. Uh, yeah. I'm going to write 18. Give me a second, guys. Something wrong with my calendar. Why is that? I'm done with uh, recording these dates. So sales is how much, guys? I have, yeah, it's 40,000. No, we saw it just now. So 40,000, I recorded it. So now I move on to my sales account. It's a credit account because cash account debit, sales account credit. So I'll write the cash value here, saying 18 first uh, cash, uh, how much is the amount they have sold? 40,000. So I have done this, the basic fix adjustment. Now we are almost done. Then we move on to the next part. Cash received from a debtor of Pawan rupees 30,000. So we are receiving a uh, debtor. We can directly write the uh, debtor's name, Pawan. So it's better if you write the debtor's name, Pawan, 30,000. So Pawan gave us 30,000. I'm going to record 30,000. Then I open up an account for Pawan, but I forgot to pick the dates. So again, I'll just see when is the date uh, we are receiving Pawan's money. On 20th first. Okay, so 20th first is Pawan has given us money. So then we're going to record. It has first of 20. We have, I mean, uh, January 20. We got 30,000 from Pawan. Pawan is a data. So open up a data account. Data because we, he is paying some money and Pawan is a data. They have informed it in the push. So I'm going to draw another two accounts. Okay. So I'm going to write here Pawan account. Pawan account is actually paying money for us, so their account will become credit because of the data. So he is paying cash on 20th first, uh, he is paying us cash. Then uh, we have recorded these uh, adjustments. Then we move on to the next part of the sum. The sum says that we have a value of uh, cash paid to creditor, Surat 24,000. So creditor means it's a credit account, but they are paying uh, from cash. How much they are paying for Surat? But I just want to know the uh, dates, guys, again. Surat is being paid on 24th and it's 34,000. So I'm going to take here Surat. Yeah. I'm going to take here Surat. They're paying 34,000. And here you can record the date 24th. Now I have recorded it uh, correctly. Now I'm going to take Surat account. Surat is a creditor. Each balance brought forward will be on the credit side. But when you make a payment, cash account will become credit. Surat account will become. So 20, 34,000, we'll write here cash, but write the date first of all, and cash. So I recorded that also, guys. Then we move on to next adjustment. Then we have the next adjustment. We have, yeah, cash paid to, uh, cash taken for personal use, rupees 5,000. So this is a drawing she has actually made. You can't take personal use in your narration. Always remember to use drawing. So he has taken 5,000, but when is the date he has taken? 25th has taken 5,000 out of the business. So uh, 25th, I'm going to record 25th. Yeah. 25th, he has taken drawings. Personal use, 5,000. So I'm going to open up an expense account because drawings is an expense account. Credit, cash book, debit drawings. So I'm going to record drawings. Yeah. So I'm going to record drawings. So here I'll write here drawings. Then I will write here actually he took 5,000 uh, of cash on 25th of first cash. Why do we record this narration in each every account does? Because it's important. If you see cash book, you see capital, uh, they have invested capital, they have taken from bank loan. You, need, you will know the source. And if you go to capital account, you'll know where this 80,000 came, came from cash book. That's the reason we, we write narration. So narration is important whenever you guys are doing 
Then we move on to the next adjustment, guys. Adjustment number, I don't know, it might be nine or yeah, nine. So in, interest income received rupees 30,000. So interest income received is how much, guys? I'm going to record interest income received uh, is an income. So it's a interest income. Uh, you can you don't want to write received. You can write income, interest income. That's more than enough. So I'm going to write the date, first of all. Know the date is very important. So dates are uh, uh, most of the time 3,000 and 26 percent. The amount is 3,000 and 26 percent. So interest income is an income account. So when you receive income, uh, cash account will become debit. Interest income will become a credit account. So I'll open up an account for interest income and I'm going to record it on the ledger account. So recording on a ledger account is a very important part of your syllabus. So I'm going to record interest uh, income right interest income then i'm gonna write the amount 26 first we received cash of how much we received guys 30000 i think or 3000 i think 3000 if i'm mistaken i'm sorry guys i think 3000 yeah then we move on next part of this sum uh can free payment of bank loan if you pay the money to the bank again uh, your cash cash will decrease actually so a uh, cash book will become credit, but there's one account which will be affected. Uh, now you need to be very, uh, very concerned about what I'm going to do, guys. Focus now very carefully what I'm going to do because this adjustment is very, very, very important. So 28th first, uh, I'm going to write here, 28th first, yeah. 20, or you can write first, 28th first. I'm taking bank loan, I'm paying, how much I'm paying? 6,000. So I just check it. Is it six thousand the value? Is it six thousand? So now I'm not going to open up a repayment of bank loan account here only. Uh, you need to be very careful on what we are doing here. You will not be doing a repayment of bank loan account here. You will be actually actually recording it on the uh, bank loan account itself. So now I'm moving on to bank loan account. You might see here. Yeah, bank loan account. Here we have an account. So here cash book account will become credit. Then of course, bank loan account will become debit, saying uh, 6,000. You will say the date, fifth, uh, or 28th, first cash. Now, I'm gonna teach you a few things in this sum, guys. Uh, now, you need to be very careful how I'm gonna balance this uh, cash book. So balancing this cash book has been taught in your uh, textbook in a very, uh, very big content. Now, I have already done your sum, you might see here. Uh, I'm almost done with your sum, so I'm gonna show you how much I have done with the sum. I have finished your cash book, but they have not balanced this sum. But I'm going to be a bit different, guys. I'm going to balance this sum uh, now with sales. I'm not going to keep it blank because they are doing the balancing later, which I can't do. It. I'm not. I'm going to do it now, guys. So help me to do this. So let's move on to the sum and let's attempt to do the uh, balancing part. So how do we do the balancing part? So when I take a account, guys, now you might see which side should be great. Always remember in cash book, in cash book, always. The bit side will be always greater. So as I said, you need to know one thing in cash book. What side will be always greater, guys? The bit side will be always. The bit side will be always greater. Will be greater because with your money only you can spend. If you don't have money, you can't pay. That's the actual scenario. So you will have your debit side, you know, uh, higher. So I'm going to take the total of your debit side, guys. So I'm going to take this addition. You might see this addition. Actually, I'm going to take the total here. Here, the total is 203,000. So I'm gonna take like, you need to put two columns if you can do like this. Yeah, now you can see, I'm gonna bold it guys a bit. So you can see it a bit, yeah. Let me see. Now you can see a bolded uh, line in between. So this is the total column of both sides actually. Now I have bolded it in both sides, but you need to take these two values in both sides and after you should get the total of this debit side. Now this debit side total I'm taking, you might see it's 203,000 and I'm taking the credit side here, uh, it is 104,000, you can see here guys. Actually you should add it and find it out in your older exam, you can't do like I am doing in my Excel sheet. So you need to get these uh, differences actually. First of all, I'll take the higher amount which is 203,000 for the debit side. I'm gonna take the same amount to the credit, uh, credit side 203,000. Now actually, you are you guys know that uh, my debit side was two hundred and three thousand, and my credit uh, credit side was one hundred and four thousand. So the difference was ninety nine thousand. This ninety nine thousand, I should remember, guys. I should write it as carried 
down. So you can write it as carried down CD, or you can write it as carried forward C. You can use any name. When you have a balance brought forward, I mean, when you are taking a balance on the beginning of the month, we say it as brought forward balance. Or if you are ending up the balances, like you are balancing it up, if I put this 99,000 only, it will become balance. As I'm using CD, carried down, here I'm going to bring the balance for the next month on February 1st. I'm going to write the date here, guys. Now, see here what I'm going to do. Okay. So I'm going to, first of February, I'm going to bring this carried down to the opposite side. Always remember, carried down will come on the, now, asset is, cash book is an asset account. So you will have carried down balance on the credit side. But when you're bringing for the next month, you should bring it for the debit side. You'll write here, broad down. You can write broad down or broad forward. So you don't want to write the full format, but BD or BF is correct. CD or CF is correct, guys. So I will write this 99,000. So with this balance only, the business will start commence for the month of, for the month of, uh, what do we say, uh, for the month of February. Now, if you see here, guys, now I've done the balancing for uh, cash book. Now I'm going to do the balancing for a few accounts. I'm not going to do, pick up every account. I'm going to start up teaching you the balancing of a capital account. Here, as I said, the same way, you take a format like this. In both sides okay so now you will put two lines like this then you see credit side is higher so 80,000 you will bring it and this side also will write 80,000 on the total column then you will write cd 80,000 then debit side again brought forward should be brought down to 80,000 so this is how you record guys in exams so i have done the same way do all do for all the accounts all the ledger accounts do it but i'm gonna uh, do it for bank loan again because bank loan is a bit different other accounts you can Balance it off when you have time. It's not it's 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 not important, guys, to balance. But it's better if you balance because it's so neat if you balance. In some adjustments, they might say in exams balance it. In sometimes they might not say. Don't waste the time if they don't say. If they say how to balance. So fifty thousand is on the debit so credit side. It's higher. So I'll bring the higher value in both sides. Now you see here. Actually, six thousand is on the credit side. If I deduct six, I mean debit side. Fifty thousand minus six thousand will give me a value of forty four thousand. That is what we say carry down. So I have recorded the carry down. I, I have finalized the sum. And if I'm bringing forward for the next month on 1st of February, I will be bringing brought down balances as how much guys? I'm bringing 44,000. So this is what I have recorded. Here, as I said, if I'm bringing brought forward on, again, uh, on second, uh, first, second, I will write 80,000. Now you might understand, ask this carry down. When I should do this carry down? At year, at month end, 31st, first should do this carry down again here also i forgot to write the date it's the carry down should be done but end of the month which is 31st uh, january so i hope you guys understood this basic adjustment of your cash flow so moving on to the next time guys because this sum has been i don't know why many students many students were requesting to do cash flow i didn't have time guys i'm teaching with cambridge uh, a levels so much of busy schedule with that i'm trying to prepare a time for you guys to teach you free on online so inform your friends so they can learn it with me in an easy manner so you don't want to know as you all know already how to balance it off guys i will say don't spend time again using the page number 90 no no point guys page number 91 activity one i'm not going to do if you have time guys actually uh, attempt the activity two uh, if you find it difficult you can inform me. but i forgot to do one particular thing guys on the sum i didn't put the receipt uh, and voucher number i said that, uh, that i want to Cross check it, that's the reason I didn't put the uh, receipt number. As you all know, in this sum, they would have actually used now. I can just write now in this sum, they have used uh, like one, two, those invoices as how they have taken one, they have taken all the receipts as like this. I think if I'm not mistaken, they went with the sequential order. So I have just copied it. So it's that far easy. So you might see uh, one, two, three, four, five. So I have recorded the same uh, thing. And 001 for payment, there are six payments, so I'll confirm it with the payment type. So six payments should be there. I'll record it here, guys, with one by one. So I'm going to start here. Uh, I'm, I'm not being lazy, guys, with you, but I'm saying always find the easiest way to do the particular sum. I'm going to go in the same format, guys, because they are not changed anything in this particularly. Yeah. So uh, I think bank loans, I'll just confirm it uh, in a way like repayment of bank loan is six, cash taken for personal use, five, four, three, two, one. So I have just, you know, recheck it, your orders and receipt numbers are correct. So I recorded it. I always keep it at the last moment because it's easy to record for me. Or 
if you you guys can you guys uh, can do even at the beginning guys don't waste time at the last moment for me just to cross check it are you always do it in this particular manner so as i said you don't want to waste your time on learning i mean, I mean uh, don't want to focus on this area particularly on page number let me say what is this page number page number have we did the sum 89 90 you don't want to see what is uh, there so already i taught you what is carried down on board four Factorial two is not that important. If you have time, but then this guys, that's more than enough for this course. Then I'm going to teach you something today. Ah, uh, it's a very important part of the cash book. Now, as I said, there are one way, one thing you need to understand. One is cash book. Other one is uh, I'm going to teach you three column cash book, which has discounts. So in books of account, guys, there are two type of discounts in your books of accounts. One is trade discount. Other one is cash discount. Trade discounts should not be taken into books of account. Cash discounts should be taken into books of account. Let me see here. A discount can be explained as a brief deduction of value from a value of a transaction listed price. When it takes place, discounts can be classified in two main categories: as trade discounts and cash discounts. These cash discounts are further classified as discount receipt and discount allowed. Now remember, guys, trade discount is not taken. Now I I'm going to explain you how trade discounts work. I don't want you guys again to review these two pages and uh, you know spend your time. So let me explain you this discount here on the Excel sheet. So I want you guys to focus. I'm going to skip this uh, particular area directly. I'm going to move on to some, but before that, I want you guys to take a writing book and write a topic called discounts in your books. Yeah, we're going to do it together. So there are two double discounts, guys. You need to know. Uh, I'm going to teach you how a discount works, guys. So it will be easy for you. Now let me explain you what is a discount. As I said, discount is a reduction in value on your listed price. So you have two discounts. First one, I'm going to teach you trade discount, and I'm going to teach you second one. Cash discount. So why trade discount is given? Whenever you purchase a product, whenever you need to know this uh, definition, guys. Whenever a product is purchased or sold, I can I will uh, direct it to the customer. A discount is given at that point. Point of sale. Ah, received at the point of. So what is what what is he saying, guys? When a product is purchased or sold directly to a customer, a discount is given at the point of sale or received at the point of purchase. So if you are selling, giving a discount. To a customer, or if you are getting a when you are purchasing a product, or when you are selling a product, you will get a discount at the time of purchase or sales. At that time, we say that discount, trade discount. Normal trade discount can be now. I'll take an example, guys. You purchased a thousand dollar, thousand or ten thousand rupees. You have made a purchase. Now the uh, the shop person said they are giving a discount of ten percent. Okay. Now this is discount percentage they are given. Now this is on listed price, guys. Now you need to know what is discount. What is listed price? Listed price is the amount the product has been sold actually. So this listed. Okay. Now ten thousand is the actual amount they are given into ten over hundred will give you you a value of thousand. This is your discount. So after paying your you know after deducting the discount ten thousand minus thousand discount, ah uh, you will be only requested to pay nine thousand rupees. Now in your books of account when you record this guys when you make a purchase. Now I'm speaking about. Purchase, okay. So I'm making about a purchase. Let me consider as let me consider as credit purchase. So it's very easy for me to explain this scenario. If you have made a credit purchase, you didn't pay any money, but still you need to pay one day. But when you purchase on ten thousand, they gave you a discount of ten percent. So you need to pay only nine thousand rupees to the credit supplier. So then now when it comes to these nine thousand rupees, actually you need to pay one day this nine thousand rupees, but You will record now. How do you record this in books of account? Do you record it ten thousand and you got thousand discount received? Do you consider it as discount received? Remember, guys, the discount is not recorded in the books of account. Only cash discount will be recorded. Which means this thousand amount, I'm going to exclude it completely. I'm going to exclude it completely. I'm not going to take to my books of account. How how I'm going to record this, guys? I'm going to record this as purchases account. Now see here, this is the double and double account debit nine thousand. And what account credit, guys? You guys know the double entry creditors account because they are they are the trade payables account credit nine thousand. So I recorded the basic stuff. 
Now, how come a cash discount comes into play when the trade discount has taken place? As I said, now I'm talking about a point of purchase, not uh, it is credit purchase. Now, in credit purchase, what you will get, get as I said, cash discount has two discount, one discount received and discount allowed. So, when I'm going to speak about discount received because here they are speaking about credit purchase. Now, I'm going to hold this and you know, analyze. I hope you guys are writing with me because this is very essential. You need to take this down with me now. Here, uh, actually, now uh, if you have purchased the product and you don't pay the money on time to the credit supplier. Supply will be worried when he will receive the money and he will give a discount to get the money from you. That discount is known as cash discount. So now let me explain you the definition of cash discount, guys. Cash discount means what is it? The discount is given to collect the cash. Cash. It can be either from Predators, we give predators or from creditors. So creditors give us. So when debtors we give to debtors, if discount is allowed to debtors, so what do we say that guys? We say that's discount allowed. Very good. So you guys understood now this particular part. If discount is received. From creditors, then we said as discount. Yeah, so we found the easiest part. So we have already found it. What is discount received? Uh, you guys might feel I'm a bit smudge on my previous videos. I was good clear because my laptop got broken, guys. I'm really sorry that I'm doing this video because this is important for you guys. That's the reason I'm doing with my broken old uh, old old seven years back old laptop but anyway you guys are focused on the lesson so let's move on to the point you guys are not going to see this beautiful face you're going to see the screen so then we move on to the point we want to discuss have discount you have a uh, discount uh, allowed and discount received so we have you need to understand how do we record this type of two things but first of all as i i'm going to take it's the same example now this is credit purchase of nine thousand how do you record this credit purchases now, this cash discount is a complicated area. People consider it as very complicated. I don't know why may, students make it very complicated. So now I'm going to take a discount receipt because this is related to credit purchase. You see this example, guys. I'm going to take the same example. Now, they purchased 9,000. Finally, they have recorded 9,000. Now, again, the creditor is giving a discount for us. Creditor gives a discount on the maybe 10% discount of 10%. If the cash, if the cash is paid before, or if the bill is settled, if the bill is settled in a month, so within 30 days, if you settle, you will get another 10% discount. Now I, I just need to know how much discount I will receive. Actually, which I will record in my book. So 9,000 is the actual purchase price. So in purchase price, I'm going to take another 10% discount. Now, this is what we need to record in our books of account. 10%, which is 9,000 10% will give me a value of 900 rupees. Now, this is the actual amount I'm going to pay. So I'm going to take uh, 9,000 and I'm going to deduct the discount and to know how much I'm going to pay, guys. So 900 is the amount I'm going to deduct. So 900 is the discount. Uh, we have received, actually, it's an income for us, but it's an expense for the credit card. So discount received is 900. I'm going to take and now I'm going to pay 8100 so if i put this in in in, in double entry format guys i'm teaching discount received no not discount allowed how do i record guys discount received discount received double entry. so write with me guys discount received double entry. how do i record this now we purchase 9000 from the uh papers you can see the double entry creditors account 9000 purchase account uh, 9000 so then i'm going to pay the money to the uh, creditor if i pay the money to the creditor how much i should pay i should pay 9000 but now i'm going to not pay 9000 i'm getting a discount received so i'm going to pay actually i'm going to deduct 9000 from the creditor's side so creditor's account uh debit 9000 now i will represent this in ledger account also guys so don't get confused how to record this creditor's account 9000 then we have the second double entry you need to know discount received account yeah now received account credit 
900. Then what is the balance you are going to pay? Cash account or cash or bank. You can pay in both guys. Account credit 8100. So if you take the credit side 8100 plus 900, will you give you 9000 and the bid side also 9000. If I put all these adjustments which I recorded from the beginning to now, I can put in few uh, few ledger accounts, guys. I'm gonna represent that also for you. I will record it in the ledger accounts. You will have so much of doubts when you're doing this. Uh, so I'm, I'm teaching you everything clearly. If you do not understand this adjustment, guys, watch this video again and again because this is very important to do our next exam. If you don't understand, it is going to be very complex for me to teach you the same thing again from the beginning. So if you have time, please review uh, this video again. So then uh, we move on to the uh, double entry guys. Now I'm going to take the initial purchase. Uh, initially, I purchased it for how much guys? Purchase account debit, credit as account, credit and so I'm going to put two accounts guys. I'm going to make a small screen. So you can, I can put a few more accounts guys. So here I'm going to write uh, purchase account. Here I'm going to write creditors account. Here I'm going to write we got discount received. So I'm going to write discount received. Right. Give me a second, guys. I'm very slow in Excel. Okay. Then we have, uh, I'll write here discount received. And there's another account which is involved. I'm going to record it under cash account. I hope you guys can see this very clearly. Yeah, I'm going to put here the cash account. So easy. Uh, now I'm going to do the sum, guys. Now you see here, this is the double entry. First, actually, I'm going to go by one by one. First, I purchased the I purchased the goods. So 9,000 was the actual purchase. Here, yeah, I'll write creditors. I'm going to go one by one, guys. So I'll write here number one. So you know how this double entry actually works. And here you will record 9,000 uh, as purchases. Because this is the value we have actually purchased from the creditors. Then we got a discount. Actually, we found it was 900. And I'm going to uh, take this 900 as discount receipt. So, discount receipt is an income account 900. I'll say here creditors. And uh, if I say creditors here in creditors account, I'll write 900. And I'll say here as I will say it as. So, you guys would have understood how to record this. Uh, basic discount received. So I'll write here discount uh, received here. So as I have doesn't as I have very less space, guys. I will uh, write discount Rick, but remember to write discount received. So this is the second adjustment I'm doing. So I'll put two here. Also I'll write two. So you will have an idea how this double entry works actually. Now then uh, I have another account, guys. Cash account. I'm paying in cash. So cash account is decreasing. So here I will record it as uh, eight thousand one hundred. Saying discount, I mean saying uh, creditors. Again, it's second adjustment. So creditors, eight thousand hundred, and the creditors account. You say they paid from cash. So adjustment number two, cash. Saying eight thousand one hundred. So I hope you guys understood. Now when I when I settle settle this account, guys, see they have paid the entire amount. This is what I said in uh, other term. They have actually paid now. This credit side and debit side is getting equal. So they have paid the entire amount. So you need to understand. This is how a discount works for discount to see. If you guys, if you think that I was a bit speed, go in a slower manner or review this discount again because this is very, very, very important for exam. So I'm saying important. It's you who need to decide. Do I need to study it back or do I need to move on? Don't just, you know, get it, make it uh, very hard when it comes to discount. Now I taught you discount to see. I'm going to teach you discount allowed. This is the last part of discount. So how do discount allowed work, guys? As I say, uh, this is uh, related to debtors, guys. So this is a discount given towards the de uh, to debtors. We give this uh, as a debtor. So discount allowed is not an income. It's an expense to the business. So I'm going to take the same account, guys. Uh, I'm going to take an example for this uh, example. I'm going to do another example, guys. Uh, a credit customer or uh, yeah, a customer, a credit customer purchase. Let's see how I'm going to record purchase goods worth of 20,000. Now I'm going to take trade discount and gas discount together to do this sum. Okay. Then, uh, did I get the double entry for discount received? Yeah. What is the double entry? Yeah, I have given the double entry correctly. Perfect. 
So uh, credit customer purchase goods worth of rupees twenty thousand. Then uh, what do you have? Uh, the credit customer didn't stop from that point of view. Then he he was given a discount, or I can say he was given a trade discount. Huh? Twenty percentage. When he purchased, he got twenty percentage off. Then he was informed. He settles the money. Money. So, thirty-first of January, he will get further ten percent. Right. So now, ah, uh, here I can write a credit customer. Here for credit customer, I can write when he purchases the asset first, ah, uh, first of the month. He has purchased, so he got a discount, twenty percent is a trade discount, and we are giving a ten percent discount, and he settling, he settle the entire amount, amount before when he might settle before that particular month. So he settled before, ah, uh, yeah, he settled the entire amount on twenty eight. So he actually paid before thirty first. So he should. Receive a cash discount also. Now I'm going to take this twenty thousand. I'm going to find the trade discount first of all. First of all, let me find the trade discount and remove it off from the uh, listed price. So twenty thousand is the listed price. In that, I'm going to see twenty over hundred, which is going to be thousand eight hundred rupees, guys. So I'm going to uh, remove this thousand. I'm going to zoom a bit so to have a clear view on what I'm doing. So now here twenty thousand into twenty over hundred is giving me thousand. Eight hundred. So now I'm going to record this. Uh, I'm going to remove this thousand eight hundred. Twenty thousand minus thousand eight hundred will give me a value of uh, eighteen thousand two hundred uh, rupees. So now once I have got this eighteen thousand two hundred rupees, now this is the amount of money I should record in my bookstore account. Now this is a debtor's transaction, so it's a sale which I have made. So when I sell the product, where when, when how do you record so sales? Ah, uh, credit sales. I should record how to record this double entry guys. Credit sales double entry. I'm gonna take a uh, debtor's account uh, debit. Yeah, this is a double entry, guys. Debit. How much is the debtor's account? Thousand eight hundred. The I mean, eighteen thousand two hundred. Then I have sales account. So sales account credit. I will write on the credit side eighteen thousand two hundred. So I have done the basic stuff of uh, recording, like as I did for purchase uh, creditor's account uh, credit and purchase account debit. Same way I should record the basic stuff. So I remove the trade discount. I'm recording in my bookstore account. I'm giving discount allowed. As I said, that if he gives me the money before 31st first, I'll give him another 10% discount. Here I have informed that very clearly. So I'm going. He has paid the money on 28th. He has settled the entire amount. So I'm going to give him a discount allowed. So how do I give discount allowed? Uh, it's very easy, guys, to understand. Now you need to find the amount. Now in 18,200, uh, we are we are going to give him a discount of 10% because he has paid us before the amount. So it is 1,820. So if you deduct this thousand eight hundred twenty, so eighteen thousand two hundred, how much we will actually get? You know, that's what you need to know. How much we actually get from the from the data? We will get eighteen sixteen thousand three hundred and eighty. So thousand eight hundred twenty, we're going to bear it as an expense because we are giving him a discount to get the money from the uh, data. So now, how do I record this in the books of account? How do I record the double entry of discount allowed? So I'm going to issue the double entry. Uh, ah, yeah, double entry. Double entry of discount. Let me take this one line instead, so it's easy for guys to see. Discount. So I have taken double entry of discount allowed thousand eight hundred twenty. I'm going to record the double entry guys. How do I record the double entry? In the debtor's account. So actually, first of all, I'm going to receive cash. So cash account. I'm receiving sixteen thousand cash account debit. How how much I'm receiving guys? I'm going to receive ah uh, sixteen thousand three hundred and Uh, 80, and now when it comes to a discount allowed account, this is what I'm gonna lose from my hand. It's an expense. That's the reason it becomes a debit because assets are expense increase in the debit guys. It's thousand eight hundred and twenty. Then if you see the total, it should be eighteen thousand two hundred full sub total. And then we have the next uh, adjustment, the last adjustment. Ah, uh, this is debtors. They are paying from their account. So debtors account will become credit, and that will that is going to be eighteen thousand two hundred incomplete. This is how you record the discount allowed account. So I'm going to show it in under under the four uh, ledger accounts. If you take the same four ledger, so I can easily, easily, uh, you know, easily do it, guys. 
I'm going to copy this. Okay, now I am going to write here discount sales. Okay, I'm going to have first of all, I'll erase the entire stuff. Sorry. I'm sorry. There's another account. I, I forgot to take that account. I'm going to start sales account here. This is how you record into the uh, account. So I'm going to write here sales account. Then I have discount allowed account. Right? Then I have cash account, guys. So I'm going to write here cash account also. Now I, hear, I have here a sales account, guys. So sales account, how much is my sales I have made? Actually, I have made a sales of. So I, I'm going to record these guys under these books of account sales. Uh, how much was sales? 18,200 actually. I'll write here letters. Yes. And here I'm going to write sales. 18,200. Actually, the letter paid 18,200 first, but we uh, made it in different two forms. He paid us cash actually. How much he paid us cash? He paid us cash here, you can see, uh, 16,380. So this will become credit in his account and cash account will become debit. So 16,380. How do I find this 16,380 as debit cash? Because this account, 16,380, I should not see here because this debtor's account is strong the way you are seeing. It should be cash account. So I, I should see it should be cash account under that. It would have recorded as debtor. So what you are recording under that, you cannot see what is that account. That's what you need to uh, have a focus. Then we have uh, discount allowed as 1,820. So I'll record discount allowed 1,820 on the debit side. And I will record uh, discount allowed. Uh, here I will record it as details. Because so it's an expense. Now I'm going to finalize this account. You guys need to know. Here if it is debit, uh, in, uh, in debtors account, it's going to be credit. So I'm going to write discount allowed. Right? Now I have rec recorded this uh, correctly, guys. Then I'm going to... Take the total, it is just 200. So I'm going to write here, it is just 200. So I have balanced my ledger's account. You know how to balance a ledger account in cash and discount allowed in sales account. So I won't waste my energy to balance these accounts, guys. You guys can easily do it. So that's all, guys, when it comes to discount. This is the easiest part. I don't know. Just it, 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 it has the easiest, guys. I don't think it is easiest, but uh, it might be a bit easy if you guys can uh, do the sum again and again and practice as much as possible. Then we move on to the next part of the textbook. So I taught you the entire discount, uh, received uh, and discount allowed and cash discounts and uh, trade discount. How, how does it work? They don't ask the definition in exam, but better if you know the definition. That's the reason I gave a bit detail. So don't uh, again read the page number 92, 93 and 94. I think. Because I have given all the double entries exactly how it should be. Now I'm going to do a small, the, the last account of this sum. Yeah, you see, there's an account. So there are two books we're going to do now. Uh, which book we'll do now? Because I'm, I'm going to teach the, the hardest book itself because it's, it's going to save our time. Shall I start from? Oh yeah, we'll uh, keep this sum because uh, I think, uh, what shall we do? Shall we do this sum and do the next sum? Or shall we do both? Okay, I'll do both, guys. Because if I teach both, then of course we'll have a good clear picture on what we are actually wanted to do. Let's start with Saranga's business at the following balances. As at first three 2000, uh, debtors' balances uh, like Spudji, Sanod, creditors' balances as Manisha's Kamini, cash in hand, 50,000. Now, this is what you say broad down balance or broad forward balance. You can take it as BA or BB. So I'm going to do this uh, for adjustment. It's a very easy part adjustment. So I want you guys to attempt it now with me. So let me read the sum to you guys. Saranga's business had the following. So I did these things. Following transactions took place during the month of March. Cash received from Budhi 12,500. In that they are given a discount of 2,500. I mean, we have received a discount of 2,500. 5% discount received uh, when cash. I mean, 2,500 is a, uh, we have given because we are receiving cash. So we should given. We should be, uh, we, sh we have given it as discount allowed. 
5% discount deducted when cash is received from Sanav, the respect of 10,000 receivable from him. So actually, when we received 10,000, we gave 5% discount, which is 500. Cash paid to manage 12,600, then they gave us a discount. The deducted means that's the amount we have received. 1,400, 5% dis uh, discount deducted when Sidhu Pini was paid for 20,000. So now I need to open up a cash book. Now, as I said, this is a three column cash book which I'm going to do because one side, two side, I'm going to do discount received and discount uh, uh, discount allowed. So I'm going to explain you how to do this cash. So this format is wrong. It should be uh, debit side is discount allowed and credit side is discount received. So I'm going to record this. Uh, I just wanted you guys a few times. Uh, I'm going to record. I'll put the format and I'll start the recording. Give me a second, guys. So you also please uh, uh, do the format, put the format with me, then we can do it together. So guys, now you have seen the format. Uh, I have already viewed this format. In your textbook, you might see discount received in both sides. Actually, it's wrong, guys. Uh, discount allowed should be on the debit side. Uh, they have made a small mistake on that. So this, uh, you can see the account uh, actually on my on this Excel sheet. Yeah, this is discount. It should be discount. Uh, Allowed, guys. It's not discount received. So if you can change it, please uh, cut this down and write discount received, discount allowed. Okay. So I have taught you how to record discount allowed. Then we move on to uh, discount received should be in credit side. So I'm going to do this sum with you guys. So let's attempt together, guys, from the first to the to the rest. So before we start the sum, guys, I need a few uh, put a few uh, other ledger accounts to to do the sum because. Uh, Ledger account is very important when you're doing this sum. So I'm going to copy four ledger accounts because it's going to be easy for me. So I'm going to take these ledger accounts here. I'm going to copy and paste it and I'm going to erase everything. So now uh, you might see here actually what are the ledger accounts I need. Uh, I'm going to start with the opening balances. Now you have see, you have the sum here. Uh, you might see here. Actually, uh, when it comes to debtors balances, you have Buddhi 40,000. Sano 30,000. So I'm going to move, uh, move and put another account uh, as Buddhi and Sano. So when it comes to uh, it has balanced Buddhi and Sano, you need to understand that Buddhi and Sano, how do I record this? I'll record it under Buddhi's account. Now he's a data. So data will have opening balance on the debit side. I'm going to bring it as broad forward balance, broad down balance. As I use BD with you guys, I'm going to go on BD with you itself. 40,000 and Sano the account uh, 30,000. 40,000 brought forward. Yeah. Then I'm gonna use Sanod account. So I'm gonna put Sanod account. I'm gonna use broad down again. I'm gonna use twenty thousand. So uh, easy as that. Then I'm moving on to the other two accounts. Because what are the two accounts we have? We have two accounts as Manisha and Situmini. Those both are creditors, so they are balances will start on the credit side. So Manisha forty five thousand and thirty thousand, thirty five thousand. So Manisha. Uh, account and what is the account? Manisha and I don't know, Situ Mini. Situ Mini, yeah. Situ Mini with 35,000. So I'm going to take Situ Mini's balances, uh, 35,000. So I'll record here 35,000 on broad down on the credit side, uh, 35. Yeah, sorry. That's small, small, yeah. 35,000. And Manisha account, I will take it as broad down. Uh, how much? 45,000. So then um, I'm going to do the sum, guys. You know, there's no must to put like this uh, balances now, balancing off. If you want, we can do. When I finalize the accounts, I will do it together. So no, don't worry because I have two, two here balances. Why sir has put like this? Don't worry, guys. Just do with me. When you find anything, uh, you can ask in the comment section. Don't worry. You can ask any question from me. And the last part, we need to record cash in hand, which is 50,000. So cash in hand will come on the debit side. Uh, because it's a broad down balances, so I'll record it under broad down balances. As a broad down, I will record it as uh, how much? Uh, I will record it as actually the amount 50,000 here. So I'm going to record 50,000 here. Uh, so I have record 50,000 under the amount column. So recording 50,000, then I just need to know, know the dates. Uh, when is this date of this month of this? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's starting on March 1st. So date is important. As I said, if, we, if they are given a date, always start with the date. Yeah. So March, first March. It's better if you can put the dates. Okay. Though it is pending a lot, though it is taking a lot of time for me, I'm going to do it, guys, slowly. The reason you need to put the dates, dates is important. The first, uh, I mean, yeah. So I'm going to take the dates everywhere. Okay. 
first match. I'm gonna not gonna start from the point. Uh, we stopped. So now I'm gonna start from this point. Actually, uh, my connection got a bit upset, guys. So then we move on to the point we want to discuss. Cash received from Buddhi is uh, 12,500. So we have received 12,500 and we gave a discount of 2,500. How do I record this, guys? I'm going to move on to my, uh, I'm going to move on to Buddhi's account, actually. Uh, 12,500. I'm going to record, I mean, I got 2,500 and I got 12,000, 10,000 out of this because 12,500, 2,500 goes to discount. Love 10,000 is the amount I have received. I write here Buddhi. And how to record this in my books of account? Remember, first of all, you record the double entry, the basic double entry when it comes to letters. They are paying 10,000 as cash. So I'll write here 10,000 as cash. Now I can write the date later. First of all, I'll record this clearly 2,500 as discount uh, allowed. So now you don't want to open up a discount allowed account. For now, once you finalize all the discount allowed, the full total we can transfer it to the ledger account. Don't do the discount allowed account now itself, making it as a bit complicated. Always uh, understand that uh, you can uh, later you can later uh, put all the balances into one account. So now here we have done. Now I just want to know when is this date they have paid. Actually, they have paid it in on uh, on fifth third. So it is March fifth. So I'll write the dates, guys. Uh, it's going to be March fifth. So here it's fifth March. So I'm gonna write here. The dates is important, guys, because as I said, if they are given dates, use the dates. Okay, don't uh, be without using the dates. You are also going to be uh, fifth third. If you don't see the entire thing, guys, I'm gonna uh, erase this discount because to make you see the entire stuff because uh, I can't do more than this. So of course, we will not be able to see the entire screen. So moving on to the point we want to discuss, guys, uh, actually. So now moving on to the point we want to discuss, I'm going to do the next adjustment then. So we are done with Buddhi's adjustment. Let's move on to the second adjustment of the sum. It says that 5% uh, discount deducted when cash is received from Sanod in respect of 10,000 receivable from So 10,000, we are giving 5% discount. So if I give, uh, I can do this here and show you guys. If I give from 10,000, 5% uh, discount, actually how much is the discount we are giving? We are giving 500 worth of discount. So actually in 10,000, if we give 500 discount, how much we should we get? 9,500. So we get 500, we give it as a discount. 9,500, we receive it as a uh, cash. So I'll write here Sanod. Actually, Sanod is, a, Sanod is giving us uh, 9,500 worth of money and we be allowed 500 worth of discount allowed. So in this time, in Sanod's account, I'm going to write the, uh, I'm going to first of all see the dates. So always a date is important. Eight third. So 8 3rd, I'm going to write the amount, 8 3rd, okay, so 8 3rd, I can write cash, it has given me, it has given me a value of 9,500, so easy as that guys, then I'm going to record the discount allowed we have given, 8 3rd, now uh, as, as I can't make it small, I'll write a discount allowed in this way, so I'll take Okay, so discount allowed, how much is discount allowed we got? We got a discount allowed of, uh, actually, we, they pay 500. We, we allowed them a discount of 500. So this is the uh, basic stuff that I need to do when it comes to this type, but I didn't mark the dates here, so I'm going to write, it is uh, 8. Sorry. Then I'm moving on to the next part of the side because it's creditors payment, so cash would be moved from our side. Cash pay to manage at 12,600. We have deducted cash deducted thousand points. So we have already deducted this thousand. Because they are saying the sum uh, thousand four hundred, they have already deducted. Then I move on to the adjustment. Uh, I'm gonna take discount received thousand four hundred, and we got we paid actually twelve thousand six hundred. Now I need to know for whom we paid. I think it's Manisha. So I'm gonna write Manisha. Yeah, yeah, Manisha. And the second should be Sipu Mini. So I'm going to write the names because only four people are there. Let me see their dates, first of all. Uh, Manisha, 10th, 3rd. So we have paid 10th, 3rd. So I'm going to write 10th, uh, 3rd, 10th March. Manisha. So Manisha, we paid actually uh, 10th, 3rd. We paid cash of 12,600. 
Then we have when it comes to Manisha, we have. I'm sorry, guys, I'm taking some time. Uh, 1200, uh, we take it as discount. Let's see. Okay, so, as I said, we don't have much space and need to merge. Wrap these things, guys. Discount. So I'm going to take the total, I'm, I'm not going to take the total here, then I'm going to finalize the next last adjustment of the sum. Actually, uh, moving on to the sum again. You might see here, sorry. You guys can see my screen, I hope you guys can see my screen. I'm going to take the next last one. Then we have 5% uh, uh, discount deducted when the mini was paid 20,000. So when you pay 20,000, you need to deduct 5,000. 5%. So in 20,000, I just wanted to know the discount which I'm getting. So in 20,000, 5% is how much, guys? You already know it. It's 1,000. This is the discount I'm receiving. So in 20,000, if I get a discount of 1,000, how much I need to pay the uh, person? I need to pay an amount of 19,000. So I will take 1,000 into my books. So I will take 1,000. Yeah. 1,000 as discount received. And I'm going to take 19,000 as payment. So now I'm going to note the date, guys. I don't know why I forget always, but God knows the best. 15, third. So third, 15, I have uh, utilized the payment. So discount received, uh, as I said, you need to finalize the account later only when it comes to discount received and discount a lot. So here they are paying a cash on 15, third. third. We paid a cash of uh, 19,000 actually. And also uh, on 15, third, we uh, got a discount uh, received. Actually, how much we receive? We got a discount of thousand. So I'm gonna finalize this accounts, guys. Now it's time to finalize the account. So I start with the from beginning from the uh, from the cash point of view. Okay. So I'm gonna do this sum. I think I have not left some space for cash book. This cash book which we did now. This is a three column cash book, but better remember it as cash book. I will take the full total of this both adjustment. Yeah. I'm going to take this uh, this side also, credit side also. Full total. First of all, I'm going to finalize the discount allowed and discount received. You might uh, see discount allowed account three thousand and discount received as two thousand four hundred. You don't uh, tally these accounts, so but you need to take. Discount allowed account directly to discount allowed account. Discount received account directly to discount received account. So how do I take discount allowed and discount received account? Open up two accounts, guys, like this, as you already done. So I'm gonna take two accounts, like two ledgers you need to draw. Yeah. I'm gonna write here discount allowed, first of all. So transfer from cash book, you can write like this because you don't transfer to the opposite side. Normally all the double entries you record it on the opposite side, but discount alert you are going to directly take to the debit side. Transfer from uh transferred from cash book. So uh, how much is the amount uh, they have transferred actually? It's three thousand. So now I can take it as carry it down, guys. I will send it to income statement actually. For now, uh, just just uh, remember this amount will be sent for income statement. To learn this uh, amount, why we are taking it into income statement, you learn this. But if it is for month, every month, uh, we will not take it to income statement. I'm just going to take carry it down. Those income statement stuff I will be teaching in grade 11 syllabus in the future. So now just remember to take it as carry it down 3000 to balance this account. Then I move on to discount uh, received account. How do I record this? I'm moving on to discount received account, guys. You might see here, uh, Manisha's uh, uh, and uh, Sitomini's accounts, I got 2,400. So I'm gonna record, now you need to know when I'm gonna transfer this balance. This is what you need to know very important. Always remember, guys, transferring is done on uh, month end, guys, so which is 31st, uh, three. This is already happening on 31st, three. Even carry down is on 31st, three. So you can write it down the same date in both account. Uh, it doesn't have a beginning balances, actually. Discount received also, we are transferring it on the end of the month. So I can write transferred from uh, cash. Yeah. From cash. Some people uh, say that you can record it on the 
uh, saying creditors account, but we are directly taking from cash flow. I can say uh, this amount, or you can either separate and show uh, on discount received account here. You are showing you are two thousand four hundred in uh, CPU minis and minuses account. You can put it and so take take it as total, whatever it is correct, or or even in this format is also correct. So transfer from cash flow. How much you are transferring actually? You are transferring uh, a balance from thirty first. March. Okay, so I'm done. I'm done. So I'm going to take two thousand four hundred. Same balance cash thirty percent. Uh, carry it down. Uh, two thousand four hundred. So sum is done, guys. Calculated. If you want, you can show it here. Brought down. It's not an essential thing. Uh, on first of April, I'm not going to take it. You guys know how to take this, so it's better you take it, guys. First April brought down, it's going to be 2004. Uh, here you can write first April brought down 2004. Now, finalizing this account, we have finished the discount received account and discount allowed account. I want to take the cash book as I said, cash books the result is always going to be greater. I'm going to take the total of the cash book debit side, sixty nine thousand five hundred. I'm going to write the same balance on the credit side. I taught you how to record it on the double entries on the sum. So after taking sixty nine thousand five hundred, you need to deduct twelve thousand six hundred minus ninety thousand from sixty nine thousand five hundred. So if I take sixty nine thousand five hundred minus twelve thousand six hundred minus ninety thousand, I'm going to get a value of thirty thousand nine hundred. This is the carry down balance of the cash book. So this carry down balance, I will represent it on the Month in 31st, uh, which is the 31st March 2009. So I'm going to bring this balance on brought down for April beginning. I'll show it as brought down uh, April beginning, April 1st. I'll show it as 37,900. I'm going to finalize these accounts also, guys. Now, you guys already know how to finalize this account. Always pick the value which is high on the highest side to the next side 40,000. Now, the difference is 12,500. So I'm going to take. Thirty first, uh, always write the last thing carry down, and you can write forty thousand minus twelve thousand. So actually, your balance difference is going to be twenty seven thousand five hundred. And again, first, uh, I I have brought down balance. I'm going to do the same thing that I'm going to balance this sum also. Yeah, let me balance it, guys. Help me to balance it. You also need to balance this sum, guys, with me. Then only you will be able to uh, easily understand. Twenty thousand is on the debit side; it's too much on the debit side. And actually, credit side, the difference is ten thousand. So I write ten thousand. I write carry it down to ten thousand. Then I will bring this uh, ten thousand to the debit side, saying brought down. But always remember to put the date uh, for the first, which is April first. Then carry it down. It should be present it on the end of the day, thirty first uh, twelve. Oh, sorry, sorry. Then we have uh, Sitomini's uh, name. I have missed it, guys. Remember to write account in all the names in your writing. So Sitomini account, Manish account. I'm going to find find my uh, Manish's account. Forty-five thousand credit side becomes the greater value. So I'm going to bring the same value to the debit side. So carry it down thirty-first uh, third. Uh, carry it down is going to be uh, fourteen thousand minus forty-five thousand. Give me thirty-one thousand. So brought down balance is going to be uh, fourth. Uh, I mean first fourth. Uh, it's going to be a brought down balance to stop. It's going to be thirty one thousand again. As balance. I'm sorry, guys. I went down. I think uh, I I pressed the num lock wrong, but oh uh, yeah, again I pressed the long button wrong button. So don't get upset. Thirty one thousand. So recording after that, I'm going to finish the minutes account. Thirty five thousand. I'm going to bring both sides. So I'm going to write here thirty-five thousand, and here you have nineteen thousand and thousand. If you deduct, you will get. Okay, guys. So, uh, so the last part of this sum, I'm going to finalize this sum. Yeah, I'm going to finalize the sum. So which is uh, twenty-five thousand. You can see my Excel sheet. I hope so. So twenty-five thousand is the balance. I'm going to take this side. Uh, so I'm going to take thirty-first, third, carry it down, and brought forward. I'm going to take first fill. Brought down twenty-five thousand. So this is all when it comes to guys uh, cash flow. 
I taught you in both manner, uh, a two column cast book and a three column cast book, how to do. And I have taught you uh, the entirely step by step process. Now, what you need to do, guys, uh, I want you guys to, I, I will not do the sum together with you, but I'm going to teach you the same, the exact difference, the same double entry they have done. Here, they didn't take one by one data, they took the entire data under one account. You see here, I'm going to explain you the sum. I'm not going to do the sum with you guys, but you can do this attempt it and see because I have already explained you how the sum works. Debtors balance is 40,000. They might open up a debtors account rather than earlier we had two accounts. They put 40,000 on the debtors account itself. So you see 40,000 on the broad forward side. And when it comes to creditors account, they took this 50,000 and they record it on the creditors account. Uh, credit side itself is brought down balances. And then uh, when we move on to the next part, they are saying cash balances debit 30,000. This 30,000 they are recorded here as balance brought for 30,000. Then as per the same procedure we did earlier, Cash received from data 7,600, uh, discount deducted 400. So cash received 7,600, you will uh, you will record a 7,600 cash book and discount alert 400 here. So this amount will be recorded under data's account, uh, not separately, directly you can record 7,600 and 400 you will record it as in this manner. So it's very easy for us to uh, capture. The same adjustment I think on 8th, 3rd, if you see cash is received uh, from data to settle 10,000, had been subject to 5% discount. So when you receive uh, from 10,000, giving 5% discount, 9,500 is what you are receiving. 5% discount is 500, so all together 10,000. Uh, this 10,000, again, you will show it on the debtor's account, cash 9,500, and discount alert uh, 500. So they have finalized the account and brought down the credit down. Again, the same thing happens to cash uh, creditor's account. They have taken 4,700 and given a discount of 300 for us. So 4,700 we are paying, we got 300 uh, discount. It is not discount allowed, guys. I'm sorry to say this. Actually, there's another mistake in your textbook. This is discount or received. So God says, please change it, guys. It's a small printing mistake, so don't get confused with the terms. It's discount. So now then uh, we move on next adjustment, guys. Uh, we have uh, 1,200 uh, is the adjustment we uh, have when it comes to creditors. Now, if you see here, 12,000 had been subject to 10% discount when you settle. So in 12,000, 10% discount is 1,200. So you get 1,200 and 10,800 you settle. So this will become credit means in creditor's account will become debit. You might see here. So all these values will become debit. And finally, you find the credit down balances and you will get this balance. Uh, here, they have, you see, uh, they, you can either direct discount allowed account, you can directly say it doesn't take the whole ba balances. Or either you can say discount received account and bring the whole balances to the credit set because it's the income. Here we bring it on the debit set because it's the income. Or you can all either say, from cash book, you can take directly, uh, transfer from cash book directly. If you take from cash book, 900 from debit, you can directly record under creditors, uh, discount account account, saying here, description, transfer from cash book, or in discount received account, transfer from cash book. I hope I have given you the enough uh, information. Some, I'm not gonna do guys. I have already given everything what I really wanted to explain. If you have any uh, doubt on activity, or if you have any doubts on this particular sum of Suranga, I think this is Suranga sum. If you have any discard, doubts on the Suranga sum, please uh, do not uh, hesitate to ask me under the comment section. Uh, second uh, chapter, I mean, second uh, video of chapter 8 is going to be petty cash book solely. So I have given you a complete uh, idea how a cash book works. Then we'll do a petty cash book together, guys. See you guys on another video. Please do not forget to subscribe my channel to learn with me more in future and also to get updated more in future. Please, uh, please uh, subscribe my channel, inform to your friends so they can also learn education freely, guys. See you guys on another video. Have